with this identity, we talk to it. Uh, myself, I mean, in this walk of life, I've been very, very blessed. Uh, and I mean, it, we'll get into the meat and potatoes of it all. But I, I could sit here and tell you, oh yeah, you know, I'm totally type A personality. All of my life, I've known exactly what I've wanted, how to get it, and I've never had any issues uh, figuring out who I am. But that would be so far removed from the truth. I mean, I'm sure there are people out there, uh, whether you're popular, just, you know, you're in that crowd that does their own thing, you know, and God bless you for doing it. But for me, I came from the middle of nowhere, Georgia, town of 2,000 people. You definitely had your cliques, and I mean, we all kind of intermingled, but it was one of those things you were always measuring yourself to somebody else instead of who God intended us to be. And with that, I mean, I struggled through my life. Unfortunately, I grew up knowing who God was. I went to vacation Bible school, and I was one of those Christmas, Christmas and Easter types. I uh, grew up Catholic in the Bible Belt. That was very much Southern Baptist, which was interesting in its own respect. But I would go to Wednesday night school, children's service, and I, and I, I thought, you know, hey, that's enough. I have a good grasp on the Scripture blah, 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 but when it comes to my identity, I'm going to be so wrapped up in what's going on around me that that's who I'm going to try to be instead of who God meant for me to be. And I, and I really honestly didn't understand who God meant for me to be or how to even, I guess, go about living that lifestyle. So um, to kind of just, I guess, talk a little bit about my personal testimony, when uh, I was 22... Well, from that time I graduated uh, high school, I went to college the first year. I was only there for a year because of the lifestyle I chose to live. I thought, okay, you know, instead of going to class, I can actually go to work, make money. That money, I'll go spend on beer, have a great time, party it up, and, you know, live that lifestyle. You know, that typical college lifestyle. Well, guess what? You, you do it for about a year because then all your money's gone, scholarship's gone, and then mom and dad's like, no, you're coming back home. And, uh, you know, thank God that I had that support network that actually was kind of looking out for me. That was, you know, loved me enough to get mad with me and make me uh, do some things I didn't really want to do with my life. But things from there only got worse, you know. I somewhat got involved with church, uh, our little local church. I mean, if we had 20 people on Sunday, that was, boy, you could see the preacher back there rubbing his hands together because he knew the offering was going to be good. And uh, so... He's like, hey, you know, he was from West Virginia. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that accent. I'm not even going to try to attempt it. But it was real twangy like this. And he's like, hey, we want to start a quartet, and we want you to play the guitar and sing for us. And I was like, all right, you know, I have no problem. So we'd done a lot of bluegrass country, uh, country gospel type stuff. And, you know, everybody was really into it. And I started getting into it. And I was like, man, this is really awesome. You know, I'm, I'm really feeling the Lord at work here. Everybody was, you know singing to the songs and unlike whenever it was just your typical hymnals you have the piano player doing her thing and then that one old lady that sings better than everybody and lets them know it and so nobody else wants to sing out of fear of you know being matched up next to her so uh we got everybody involved and you could really see god at work and there was an opportunity in my life to really get involved in what god had planned for me and you know he, he laid it out on a silver platter but Roy Davis thought he knew best, and uh, Roy Davis went forth with his own plan versus the one that God intended for me. And so that led me into just probably four of, I won't say the worst years of my life, because it definitely gets much worse, but just living a lifestyle that's not conducive to that Christian lifestyle. And, I mean, running dirt roads, I mean, drinking, going, I was probably burning through two, two and a half packs of cigarettes a day and just I was working full-time at a sawmill and some of the times going in you know probably if I would have tested I mean I probably would have blown you know well over the limit of what I should have you know being at work in an environment like that I mean it's nothing that I'm proud of and I don't tell you this as to say like oh yeah man I was out there doing it up but it's just it was living a lifestyle that I thought was fun that I thought hey you know this is my friends think I'm cool because I do this. I think they're cool, and it's just like this vicious circle of suck that we don't even realize is happening. And instead of giving ourselves to something much better, we think we're, you know, doing something great by fulfilling our selfish desires. 
And with that, I came to a, kind of a crossroads in my life where, you know, uh, I had like this throw down at work with this old man that was trying to kind of pastor me, or not pastor, but disciple me. And I wasn't having anything to do with it. You know, I thought I knew everything. I was almost 22 years old. And I was like, you can't tell me anything that I already don't know. I mean, and <laughs> I've been there and I was like, yeah, I was like, you can't teach me anything. I figured it out when I was in high school. So go on with your bad self. And uh, with that, it just all came to a head and I wound up enlisted in the Air Force. And uh, with that, it was kind of a unique opportunity to kind of start over. Um, unfortunately, with that starting over with the identity aspect, I had, I had a unique opportunity there in basic whenever we started because going to church, anybody who's been to basic training that's in this room right now, you love Sundays because you get to go to church and you do not have drill instructors yelling at you and just, you know, belittling you. And you actually, or for myself, I mean, I, I started drawing near to the Lord again. And this is the first time I ever went to a contemporary service as well. Um, we walked in and Jesus Freaks was playing on a big screen. <laughs> and I was like, I think I've walked, in, walked into the Wiccan service. I was like, what in the world? I was like, uh, I... Jesus freaks and then you know these headbangers are doing their thing. I was like, ah, this isn't the Christian music I know. And uh, no, they were like, no, stick with it, man. No, oh, this is awesome. And the dude preached and it was my first contemporary service and I was just like totally blown away. I was like, I didn't even know you could talk about God that way. I didn't know you could preach about Jesus in the word in such a manner where, you know, it actually is understandable versus, I mean, you know, I had heard a uh, King James version all my life and nothing against it. I mean, it has a very special place in my heart, but man, it is hard to understand when you actually look at it. So, you know, I had that opportunity again, just shortly down the road, to start over, find the identity that was meant for me, but I graduated tech or, uh, basic, went to tech school, and was set free in the world again. And what was the first thing we wanted to do? I was of age to drink, and bam, that's what we did. So over the course of, I would say, that was 2006, 2006 into uh, 2009, I became really great at my job. I was self-centered. I basically let my life live around work, going TDY, being the one who could party the hardest and uh, just living that lifestyle of work hard, party harder. But one thing I, I, I tried to prove to myself was like, you know what though, I like this Christian thing. And because I need volunteer service hours, I'm going to play in the praise band at our uh, church on bass. So Thursday nights, we would have our practice. We would go play. We were playing old Hillsong songs. I didn't know that. And I thought they were brand new and loved them. Everybody else is like, this old crap. You know, nobody wants to hear that. So I was happy as, you know, pig in mud. But um, after we left, we would go back to my room and just throw down. And I mean... It's to the point of where you wake up wondering what happened that night and then having that feeling like, I know I'm going to have to apologize for something today because I probably did something stupid. And then it was, it was very much that. You finally get told what stupid act you did. You kind of feel bad about it, but you're like, okay, well, let's just go drink the pain away. And, you know, you ultimately become a fully functioning alcoholic at that point. I wound up in a relationship at the time, a girl in Ireland, and uh, this is where everything really, this runaway train, you know, starts getting towards the end of the tracks. And uh, over the course of the year, we built a relationship on basically nothing but partying, uh, sex, and drinking. I mean, it was nothing that a loving, caring relationship should be. And uh, it was, I guess, December of 2009, um, I was, I'd got orders to Korea. I knew I was going to be going to Korea for a year, and she hated the military. I mean, hated it. And I, my, my advice to her was like, well, you know, if you want me to leave the military, we'll just kibosh this relationship because I'm going to choose the military over you. Me being too stupid. I was like, hey, dummy, if you're going to, you know, base a relationship off of that, maybe you shouldn't be in this relationship. But being conformed to the patterns of the world, you know, I thought I knew what was best, and I kept with it, and, you know, Follow the flesh's desires instead of, you know, again, what God had laid out for me. With that um, comes the more sour aspect of my life, in which is still sort of a spiritual and emotional cancer for me. 
but we conceived. So uh, that December, we uh, decided we would get engaged, and we, I went to Korea knowing that I had a child on the way, and we were engaged, and just not a relationship built on anything a relationship should be. Going to be bringing a child into this world that, you know, is not going to have the start that she deserved because of her two idiotic, stupid parents that have found an identity in something that, you know, wasn't God's plan. And two months within being to Korea, I got there in January. By March, uh, she basically killed the relationship, said she had enough, unfortunately. I mean, well, no, I'm not even going to say unfortunately. I mean, I can't say it was all her either. I mean, I, I, I never gave her any reason because I was there in Korea by myself. She was in Ireland, and I was like, well, you know, all right, I talked with you 30 minutes on Skype, but uh, my buddies and I want to go to the bar, so yeah, have a good evening. And, you know, I was off, and I mean, I'm not proud of any of this, and it was just the walk of life that I found myself in from just years and years and years of, you know, giving in to things that you know, I thought was cool and popular because, you know, it was the normal thing to do. And as time passed, we, there was a lot of arguing, a lot of fights about what was going on, you know, already discussing, well, I want to be a part of her life. And she's like, no, there's no way in God's green earth you'll ever be a part of her life. And, you know, just trying to figure out this struggle. And with that, uh, I was actually, you know, stationed with my now wife in Korea and she went to Christian college, and uh, we became confident because I, I, I truly believe, you know, hindsight being 2020, that God placed us there together for a reason because I, I truly needed her a lot, a lot more than I, and she needed me. And uh, with that, we were talking one night, and I was like, you know, I was like, God is done with me. There's no use for me whatsoever. I've been a drunk. I'm bringing a child into this world who, let's see, you know, doesn't deserve the pain that they're about to experience. I've hurt someone else that's going to be having this baby that they're going to have to live with this for the rest of their life. I'm going to have to live with this the rest of my life. I am, you know, just basically a social leper at this point. And she's like, have you ever heard of Paul? And I was like, well, I know he's in the Bible. <laughs> and she's like, look at Paul, figure out what he did, what happened to him. And she's like, I think if you do that, just that little bit, you will realize that God's not done with you. Because if he wasn't done with Paul, he's, he's definitely not done with you. And so I was like, all right, well, let's look up this Paul guy. So from there, you know, I, I get to reading about it, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, this dude was hunting down the children of God, you know, Christians, persecuting them much like, you know, people are being persecuted today, but probably 10 times worse because, I mean, there was, there was just nothing good that really came out of being a Christian at the time, I mean, other than knowing that you were saved. But I was like, okay, I can do this, you know. I, I, can, I can get back on the right path. It doesn't happen overnight, believe me, it didn't with me, even though this is, you know, mid-2010 when I'm starting to figure this out. It wasn't, I mean, until three years ago. Four years later, I mean, even here, just at Jessa, finally starting to really understand what God intended for my life. So with that, I was like, okay, so two things. I need to figure this stuff out with Sheena. That was my ex-fiance's name. Uh, fix things where it'll be good for Brianna so I could be a part of her life. And then with that, too, um, you know, that Ashley Bray girl really knows her stuff. And... You know, I, I need to stick by her side. And she's like, uh-huh, whatever, I'm going to England. I was like, well, I'm going there too, so you're stuck with me. <laughs> so uh, it just so happened that we were going to the same base. And right before she left at the end of that year, I finally forced her into submission and was like, hey, will you please go out with me? You know, please, please, I need that support. And she, she provided me that, you know, Christian support that I needed, praying for me let me know what I needed to look at to kind of get my life at least back on the tracks. I mean, even if it wasn't, you know, right out of the gate being where I needed to be. So we get back to England, uh, you know, history kind of wrote itself. Um, 
we're married now, thank God. You know, I'm very blessed in that regard, and I have a beautiful son. And, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, I mean, somebody so undeserving of everything that God has provided, but yet he still did it. And won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's truly amazing looking back. And, I mean, I have a five-year-old daughter now that, unfortunately, I have not seen since spring of 2012 because her mother cut all contact with me and everything else and I mean it's like you know I realize you pay for the mistakes you made in your past and I'm not gonna I mean, in no way am I trying to paint her in a bad light because I was seriously no angel at the time either and you know that's, that's something that I guess as they say you know the typical quote that's my cross to bear but where I was very fortunate and blessed is that God does love us he loved me he never quit loving me, despite all of the stupid stuff I decided I would do with my life. And he provided me with the woman who turned my life around, which I'm forever grateful for. And even then, when I was still wanting to be stupid and slip back into the ways of things, because, you know, it was like we were on a crazy deployment schedule, you know, deploying for four months every six months. When we got home, we did it up, and we did it up big. And again, started coming those nights where... It's like, dang, I did something stupid, and I know I'm going to hear about it at work. But they would laugh it off, and they're like, oh, Roy, that, that, that's just you. And it's like, it shouldn't be me, though. That, I, there's something better. And the next appointment that came up, right before I left, we found out that we were going to have a, a boy. And I was like, or, well, I found out when I was deployed what he was, but I knew he was a boy from the get-go. <laughs> and uh, I was like, no, I was like, I, I need to do something different because all these years of me trying to come up with a plan, me trying to say, hey, this is the way it's going to work, this is the way it's going to be, it all came to a head and God put me on my knees. And I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I fell on that cornerstone because I cannot imagine and I fear where I would be right now had that not happened. And since then, you know, getting back here, being at Jessup, it's been such a blessing in my life to have each and every one of y'all, uh, you know, that plays such a big part in who I can be now. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17, I'm going to go to that real quick because I just absolutely love it and what it says. And it says, this is a uh, in TV, by the way, so uh, bear with me. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, and new life has begun. And with that, it's something that I've actually been able to experience because, you know, I was always like, oh, yeah, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus. Well, this summer, after taking, you know, some Bible classes and being around these awesome people, you awesome people for one semester, we're sitting at church and, you know, the prayer at the end where it's like, hey, you know, everybody bow your heads, close your eyes. If you accept Jesus Christ today, raise your hand. I mean, I love it. I prayed it every time because I know I sin. I know I sin. And then this just voice in my head is like, well, why don't you raise your hand? And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I believe in Jesus. I, I think I'm saved. And it's like, no, there's no thinking about it. There's absolutely no thinking about it. You either are or you are not saved, are you going to raise your hand? In fact, instead of just raising your hand, why don't you stand up? You, after everything has been handed in your life, should be running and dancing on that stage saying you accept Jesus Christ. And I should have. I didn't. I mean, again, I'm human, and I'm still trying to figure out my identity. And, but having found my identity in Christ, raising my hand, Getting baptized this summer in front of my leadership family, I mean, I've been very, very fortunate in the ways that God has blessed me and the opportunities that I'm presenting now. And I'll, I'll tell you, I've spoken in front of a lot of crowds, a lot of people. <laughs> I know, buddy. Uh-oh. Here we go. All right. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've been very 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 blessed and I can't thank God enough and having the opportunity to really find myself the identity of who God intended to me versus who I thought I should be who others thought I should be you know 
even though life has its ups and downs, even though I have things from my past that, you know, I still live with, I know no matter what, through everything I go through, that God is always going to be with me through that walk. And he's yet to turn his back on me, and I know he never will. And I know it's going to be the same for you. And so this is where I want to kind of get into my scripture piece. And I know I'm, I'm running a little late on it because I, I'm a chatty Cathy and I like to talk. But um, just looking at I want, I want the meat and potatoes of this to revolve around Romans 12. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mer mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is in his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Transforming your mind, giving yourself to God unconditionally, it's, it's the, one of the most amazing things you could ever do. I mean, the, it's like having the weight of the world lifted off your chest. And I like to teach, one of the great things I got to do while I was in the Air Force, when I wasn't being a complete idiot, was uh, worked in a training shop and done a lot of teaching and such uh, as far as like, intel matters are concerned. So I would like to ask my lovely volunteers for the evening, make their way to the stage, so we can kind of do a little presentation on the uh, good word here. All right. So I'm going to brief them up on the situation real quick. You can stand next to him, and I'll be right with you all in just five seconds. Mingle amongst yourselves. <laughs> Wherever. All right. All right. So whenever you all are ready. Just take in what's happening right now. <laughs> that big old boy is being submitted. Good. That's good for you, Jesse. You'll, it'll make you a better person, I promise. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, just keep a hold of his ear and bring him right back up here. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, march him on up here. All right. All right. Now, take him to the ground. Yep. Now, now pull him back up by his ear. Okay. It's good for you, Jesse. I'm telling you, the picture I'm about to paint is going to blow your mind. <laughs> Courtney is the, the word of God. In this, no, no, bear with me, bear with me. If you give your mind to the word of God, your head, your heart, your body, your feet are going to follow. I mean, proof's in the pudding. I showed you right here, so you know it's got to be true. <laughs> and I know it's a bit of an exaggeration. Thank y'all. Give them a hand. But God's wisdom and power will move mountains. There is nothing on this great earth that he provided for us that he cannot do and that I believe he won't do. And it's just this simpleness of, I mean, and it's not an overnight process, like I said, but slowly but surely, not conforming to the patterns of this world, especially the world that we have set before us now, but going to the good book, being in community with each other, bringing up Christ, talking about him. You know, those small baby steps are, are what it takes really to start living that Christ-like life. And, I, and I'm not going to tell you that, you know, I'm, I'm living that perfect life now. I mean, I still have my moments of pure and utter stupidness. Just ask my wife. She's here. Uh, I mean, I'm sure she could talk with you for a while about it, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully she wouldn't. Love you, babe. But so that's kind of what I wanted to say scriptural. And if we can, I guess, uh, go to the next slide uh, that I have. So, I don't know why, and I'm, I don't know, I, I just randomly think about 
things, you know, as you do. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was like, in my walk of life, I was like, you know, you have that kind of clear-cut path, that nice, beautiful, paved road that, you know, can be the walk of life, that it's so easy to make your way up and down, you know, where there are no obstacles whatsoever. Unfortunately, I didn't take that one, and I went out there. There's probably trees and buzzards and everything else over the side, and I decided that I was going to play out there for a little while. But what I want you to see is those majestic mountains in the background. Think of that as our Lord, our rock. I don't care if you take that straight road right there, if you take the road I took, if you wander out in those pastures for the next 40 years, if you press towards that way, you're going to run into him, and there's nothing you can do about it. So with that, don't worry about where you are in your life right now. Where, if you think, you know, hey, you know, I've done some really horrible things, and, you know, I, I struggle giving myself to the Lord, or it's like, you know, I'm not even really sure if, I believe so much. Just know that there's hope in finding your true self for who you were meant to be. Never give up on yourself. Never give up on your friends. Because when you're on rock bottom, there's only one way to go, and that's up. And then if you're like, well, Roy, what if it has a hole on the other end? It's like, well, that's a tunnel. And there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So. You're not going to get past me with it. I'm, believe me. I've been, to, I've been to Ireland. I kissed the Blarney Stone. I, I'm full of crap. So I can, you can't BS a BSer, as they say. So I just want to leave you with that. And um, I want to provide people the opportunity, a great opportunity that I was presented this summer that I finally took serious so that, you know, I could become the friend I needed to be, the student I needed to be, more importantly, who God meant for me to be, the husband I needed to be, the, the father I need to be, that I haven't been, that, you know, hopefully a situation I can rectify, you know, if that moment, if I'm lucky enough for that moment to come. I want to go in prayer tonight. I, I want to ask the prayer team if they can station themselves around the room. And... You know, if you have feel, feel like, you know, hey, I do need help with where I am right now. I, just the smallest amount of prayer would help me kind of figure out who I am and who God intended for me to be. You know, raise your hand. Have those people come pray with you. I'll come pray with you. If you don't want to do it tonight, I will give you my phone number, 24-7-365. Call me. Stop me in the halls. Your time is my time. It's God's time. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for you because of the undeserving things that have been done for me. I love every one of you. I implore you to always keep hope. And if there's ever anything I can do for you, please let me know and it shall be done. So let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for such an awesome and humbling opportunity to come and just walk in the footsteps of giants, to be in the presence of your people. Lord, after the undeserving blessings you bestowed on my life, you have never failed in showing me your true loving kindness. And Lord, if there's anybody out there tonight that is looking to know you more, I ask that you open their minds and their heart so that they can hear what you have planned for them, Lord. And if you are out there tonight, if you want to know, Lord, I implore you, seek out prayer team, raise that hand, because it's life without him is it, it's, it's tough. It, it's just bottom line tough. But with God, He makes everything easy. Come in. Come in. So, thank you so much for all the blessings that you've provided me, these people, this school, my son, everything else, my wife. And Lord, just keep doing your amazing works and provide us every opportunity we can to just know you better. And all of God's people said,
Amen. Thank y'all. Say so, goodnight. Yeah, are you done? Yeah? All right. Well, I'm done too then, buddy. Thank y'all. Y'all have a good night.